YouTube and welcome to Wildlife Wonders. My name is Nikki and I'll be your host. Let me first say that I am running a small cold, so I hope that my nasally, my semi-nasally voice isn't a little distracting. But today, we're going to be talking about hibernation and astiviation. When I was younger, I remember watching an episode of Corwin's Quest and he had this lump of what looked like mud and he put it in a container of water and he said okay and now we wait to my surprise a fish came out of that and i was so shocked i never thought that a fish could do such a thing and it turns out that this thing was actually a cocoon made by the ethiopian lungfish i'll play a clip in a minute of him explaining more about the ethiopian lungfish but I was so surprised and I thought it was so cool and it's a memory that I have until this day. It is something that really stuck with me over the years. The lungfish doesn't hibernate. Uh, this process is actually called astiviation, which is prolonged torpor or dormancy during a hot or dry period. Hibernation is a state of inactivity and meta metabolic depression. They're basically the same. According to Daily Mail, the African lungfish can sleep for up to five years without any subsidence. Researchers said that they slow down their biological clock during the process. Gene expression and liver compared during and after hibernation period. Changes make the fish produce very little waste and conserve energy. Understanding this process could be vital for replicating suspended animation in humans for emergency operations and space travel. Those are cool. And Jeff Corwin goes on to explain that they could be a missing link because the Ethiopian lungfish, as the name implies, it's a fish with lungs. So the fish actually has lungs and gills and its unique fins allows it to somewhat get a grip and sort of even like walk on land, if you will. They awaken when the dry river meets the wet season and they can sleep for years. And that's just crazy. I thought it was really cool and I'll play the clip now. Check this out. Something is definitely happening. This creature, before it went into estivation, before it created that cocoon, it made a little slit that it could exit from. Oh, look at that! Oh, it worked! And there it is, look at that! I can't believe this. This animal belongs to an ancient group of vertebrates called the Dipnoans. They've been living on our planet for many, many, many millions of years. It is called the Ethiopian lungfish. And there are just so many things that are awesome, that are cool about this creature. Look at this. If I hold them up, you can see one, two, three, four. The, the fins, see, he's actually swimming around there. Look at that. He's swimming, but he's actually dancing those fins around. But they are more limb-like than fin-like. Not only, like other fishes, is it equipped with a gill-like respiratory system, but it also has a lung-like respiratory system. When the water becomes very thick and hot, and deoxygenated, this beast still survives. It can creep up to the surface, take a gulp of air, like this, like it's doing right now. Look, actually just did it. See, the bubbles are exiting. It comes up, sort of demonstrated again, like that, takes a gulp of air. Scientists for many years looked at this group of fish, the Dipnoans, as sort of a living link, that stage where some ancient creature transformed from fish to the amphibians and then the reptiles and then of course birds and mammals. Now, it doesn't seem to be that simple. The truth is probably a lot more complicated and more convoluted with a lot more branches heading up through the evolutionary tree. But these are an amazing creature and it is the ultimate survivor in this very extreme habitat. But here in Kenya, the wet season is well on its way We've woken up this lungfish, so let's get him where he needs to go. Thanks, buddy. All right, the next animal I wanted to talk about I saw on the frozen planet. This was episode two of seven, Spring, and it takes place in the Arctic. 
This animal is the woolly caterpillar. The woolly caterpillar is the world's oldest caterpillar. This caterpillar lives around 14 years old before it turns into a, a woolly moth. And it's super cute. This caterpillar's quest to turn into a moth is such an inspirational one. Its life is constantly on the go. From the moment it wakes up, it eats, 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 and then freezes and actually even dies. Its heart stops and everything. And when the spring rolls around, it wakes up and it does the same thing over and over again and again, year after year, until it's able to reach its final stage. This next animal I wanted to talk about is a frog. It's called the wood frog. If you saw a frog that had ice crystals on it, that wasn't breathing and didn't have a heartbeat, you would probably think it was dead. If it was a wood frog, it'd most likely be in hibernation. This was said by conservationinstitute.org. I'm gonna go on with the quote. Wood frogs hibernate inside logs or burrows or under rocks and leaf piles during the cold of winter. When in hibernation, they actually stop breathing. Their heart stops and ice crystals form in their blood. When the weather warms, they defrost and their lungs and heart go back to action. Pretty amazing. That, that's typically when animals die. When they die from being cold, it's when the ice crystals forms in their blood and in their cells. And that's exactly what happens to this frog. But the frog survives and it comes back. I don't have a clip for this frog, but I thought it was a story worth sharing. These are three unique ways that animals hibernate slash astiviate. I think that's the word. <laughs> and I hope you had a fun time watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you like me, give me a subscribe. Maybe give me some suggestions. I don't have a huge following at this point, so any suggestions, I'm sure I would just pick it up and make a video out of it. A few other videos I've been thinking about making that I haven't gotten to make yet, and I'm really looking forward to talking about those and making those in the future. I hope to see you there, and thanks for watching.